Are you curious to know how a man from the world of fabrics became the king of luxury? How did he amass a net worth of over $200 billion and become the world's richest person? And what kind of extravagant lifestyle does he lead? Join me in this video as we explore the fascinating story of Bernard Arnault and his journey from humble beginnings to global domination in the world of luxury. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss any videos from this channel. So, have you ever heard of Bernard Arnault? Maybe not, but I bet you know about Louis Vuitton, Dior, Moet, or Hennessy. Well, guess what? Bernard and his family own those luxury brands. They're all under this giant company called LVMH, which is the world's biggest luxury goods company. It's crazy big, owning over 75 brands, with like 6,000 stores all over the world. And get this, in 2022, they made a profit of over 21 billion euros, which is like 2.4 million euros an hour. Insane, right? And because Bernard's the boss of it all, he's basically the king of luxury. He's the CEO, chairman, and major shareholder. He's even richer than Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, or Elon Musk. If you check out the Forbes billionaires list, you'll notice that most of the people there are owners of companies that provide everyday goods and services. You know, like the big tech companies such as Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft. Retailers like Walmart and Zara, media, telecom, shipping, mining companies, and so on. The more people need what they offer, the more valuable their companies become. But then there's Bernard, whose LVMH company deals only in luxury goods that no one really needs. Yet, he's still sitting pretty at the top of the list. How is that even possible? Well, when it comes to luxury items, it's not really the item itself that people are buying. They're buying the prestige, status, and sense of accomplishment that comes with owning it. A 2016 study published in the Journal of Marketing found that these factors are the biggest reasons why people buy luxury goods. It's all about making a statement about yourself and your perceived superiority. That's also why many people who can't really afford luxury items end up buying them anyway. It's not always a rational decision, but sometimes people feel that non-luxury goods are inferior simply because they're not luxury. They also assume that higher priced goods are of better quality. For some people, Owning a luxury item can be a way of boosting their self-esteem or feeling like they belong to an exclusive club. It's all about reaching for a higher status and buying something that seems out of reach, even if it means stretching your budget. Designer handbags, luxury watches, or clothes seen on the cover of magazines are all symbols of that desire. And Bernard knows this all too well which is why he's built his whole empire around it. Bernard Arnault was born in a small town in northern France on March 5, 1949. His mother taught him how to play piano and had a keen interest in Dior, which rubbed off on Bernard. His father owned a civil engineering company and Bernard wanted to follow in his footsteps. He graduated from the Engineering University in Paris at the age of 21 and took over his father's construction firm just a year later in 1971. After eight years, he renamed the company and shifted its focus to real estate. In 1981, Bernard moved to the United States due to his disappointment with the French presidential election. This decision changed the course of his life. During his first trip to New York, he took a taxi at the Kennedy Airport and struck up a conversation with the driver. The driver's casual comment about Christian Dior sparked Bernard's interest in fashion and luxury. This chance encounter led to the creation of the largest luxury goods group in history. When Bernard Arnault first decided to venture into the world of luxury goods, he began his search for a brand that he could acquire and turn around. He came across Dior 
a fashion house that had once been a trailblazer in women's wear but had lost its luster in the years following the death of its founder, Christian Dior. Bernard was drawn to the brand, not only because of its history, but also because his mother had been a big fan of the label. In 1984, Bernard was able to buy Dior from its then-owner, the struggling textile company Busa, for a symbolic one French franc. He immediately set to work turning the company around. He laid off 9,000 workers within two years, which earned him the nickname The Terminator. However, he also made sure to keep the assets that he believed were valuable, including the Dior brand itself. Bernard then made a number of strategic moves to revitalize the brand. He hired the first Italian designer to the company and appointed British designer John Galliano as Christian Dior's head, which caused controversy among French designers. But Bernard was unwavering in his belief that talent had no nationality. His investment and the changes he made paid off, and just two years after acquiring the company, Dior was profitable again. This successful turnaround of Dior marked Bernard's entry into the world of luxury goods and set the stage for his future success in the industry. Bernard's vision for LVMH was to create a conglomerate of the world's most prestigious luxury brands, covering everything from fashion to beauty, watches, jewelry, and more. His strategy was to acquire companies that fit this mold and merge them under the LVMH umbrella. He was known for his aggressive approach to buying, often spending billions of euros to acquire companies. One of his first major acquisitions was Celine in 1996, a fashion brand known for its chic and minimalist style. Bernard saw potential in the brand and hired American designer Michael Kors to revamp its image. The move paid off, and Celine became one of the most coveted luxury brands in the world. The following year, Bernard acquired Sephora, a cosmetics company that was just starting to gain popularity in Europe. He saw the potential of the brand and transformed it into a global powerhouse, expanding its reach to over 30 countries. In 1999, Bernard made two major acquisitions. Tag Heuer, a Swiss watchmaker known for its precision and quality, and Gucci, an Italian fashion house that had fallen on hard times. The acquisition of Gucci was particularly significant as Bernard installed a new management team that brought the brand back to its former glory. The success of Gucci under LVMH helped to establish the company as the undisputed leader in the luxury goods market. In 2001, Bernard acquired Fendi, an Italian luxury fashion house known for its fur and leather goods. He also continued to acquire other luxury brands, including Bulgari in 2011 and most recently Tiffany & Co. in 2020. The acquisition of Tiffany & Co. was particularly notable as it was the largest acquisition in LVMH history and solidified the company's position as the world's leading luxury goods group. Bernard was known for using aggressive tactics to acquire companies, as seen in his infamous attempt to take over Hermes, which lasted for 14 years. The controversy began when LVMH acquired a 4.9% stake in Hermes through subsidiaries in 2001 and continued to secretly buy equity derivatives through financial intermediaries and subsidiaries to accumulate more shares in the Paris-based rival, with each holding below 5%. By October of 2010, LVMH had a cumulative 14.2% stake in Hermes which was further increased to 22.6% with 16% voting rights in December of 2011. However, Hermes filed a complaint against LVMH for undisclosed ownership, while LVMH countered with a complaint of blackmail, slander, and unfair competition against Hermes. After an investigation by the French financial services watchdog, it was found that LVMH had secretly bought shares in Hermes to build a stake in the iconic design house, rather than just making a financial investment as they claim. 
As a result, LVMH was fined $13.2 million for not disclosing information about the increase in ownership to the public and was ordered to distribute its 23% stake in Hermes to its shareholders, while also agreeing not to buy more shares for the next five years. After this incident, Bernard was dubbed a wolf in Kashmir by a member of the Hermes family. Despite this setback, LVMH now owns over 75 brands. So, how did Bernard become the wealthiest person in the world, seemingly overnight? Bernard had been one of the wealthiest people in the world for many years, having even briefly held the top spot a few times. However, because he is not as public as other billionaires and not as active on social media, many people are not familiar with him. But in December of 2022, Bernard's net worth of $220 billion surpassed Elon Musk's, making him the world's richest person, a title he still holds today. What caused this sudden increase in his net worth? Two factors contributed to this. The first is the pandemic, which led to an increase in online shopping, including luxury goods, resulting in higher sales for LVMH and an increase in the share price of the company, driving up Bernard's net worth. While this alone would not have been enough to make him the world's wealthiest person since Elon Musk was worth over $300 billion in 2021, the second factor, which was the sharp decline in tech stocks in 2022, helped him claim the title. Tesla and Meta both lost 70% of their value from their all-time highs in 2021. And although tech stocks are recovering, Bernard still holds his position as the world's richest person. Bernard's luxurious lifestyle is befitting of his status as the king of luxury. One of his most prized possessions is an island in the Bahamas, which is valued at an astounding $35 million. The island is a private and exclusive property, accessible only by invitation. It is no wonder that Bernard cherishes this property, as it is a true symbol of his success and extravagance. In addition to his island, Bernard also owns a magnificent chateau-style waterfront mansion in Saint-Tropez. This mansion is truly a sight to behold, with its grand architecture and breathtaking views of the sea. It is clear that Bernard spares no expense when it comes to his living arrangements, as his homes are some of the most luxurious and sought-after properties in the world. Bernard's former private jet was another indication of his opulent lifestyle. The jet was worth an astounding $40 million and was the envy of many. However, after people on Twitter started tracking his location, Bernard decided to sell the jet. The result now is that no one can see where I go because I rent planes when I use private planes," Bernard said. Despite this setback, it is clear that Bernard still enjoys the luxuries of air travel, albeit in a more discreet manner. What do you think of Bernard Arnault's rise to the top of the fashion industry? Do you think his tactics were ethical or predatory? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more fascinating stories about influential figures and their journeys to success, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my latest videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.